What is this, guys? What's happening here? What is this? I cannot believe this. Can you believe this? No, no, come on. I'm not referring to geometry, guys. Look here, down to the left hand side corner. What is this, guys? Do you see what is it here? This is a building element proxy. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm sorry to break it to you, but if you are not living under a rock, this is a real issue we have with a lot of IFC model deliveries. Very often happens so that we get these models without the elements being classified, guys. I'm sure you've been there. And actually, I challenge you to something. Like if you got one model that had no one misclassified entity in it, please leave me a comment below and let me know. I need to congratulate you because otherwise most of us are living in this mud right here where we are getting bombarded with all these models with elements which are not classified correctly. And you would say that that cannot be right, right? That's insane. How an architect, a structural engineer or an MEP engineer who respects himself and is modeling everything accordingly in Revit, in Archicad, in Tecla Structures, in Alplan, whatever they are using, and then you end up with a lot of building element proxies. You don't even know what is a wall and what is a slab. Yes, of course, visually you see it, but from a data point of view, it's not classified correctly. This is a real issue. So if you are doing this, if you are just sticking to clicking on export to IFC from the tool, you really have to up your game, my friend, because you have to deliver better data. I'm sorry for being so harsh, but this is the truth. We just have to be better. So in this case, I would expect this to be an IFC column, right? Or a column, whatever. But this is a building element proxy and building element, right? So if I want to do some costing or some planning or whatever, this would be a real pain, right? And think a bit about projects where we have thousands of elements. What do you do then? It's impossible. This cannot continue like this. We just have to be better. Then there are also the kind of situations where you get an IFC delivery and you cannot do anything about getting a new export. Let's say, for example, early phase design stages where you as a client, after getting the concepts and everything, you try to go design that building will be built after and you try to use all the documentation that you got so far from this early stage, right? And lo and behold, you will end up going through this very low quality model. I'm sorry, but that's just the truth and you don't know what to do. Well, there is a solution for you. And yes, IFC is not a PDF, my friends. No, IFC is a format that supports editing. You just need the right tool that can do that. And in my case, I can definitely recommend Blender Beam for that, which is a native IFC tool. Meaning that Blender Beam, it doesn't export to IFC, but it just saves to IFC because everything you do in Blender Beam, it's according to the IFC schema. So this is not a workflow that I would recommend, but in these situations where you just cannot get another better export for various reasons, I will not go into another rant now and list them, then what you can do actually is to use Blender Beam and fix this. Yes, using Blender Beam, you can reassign the entities, the classes to your objects to the right ones. So that's the whole point of this video. I want to show you just that. Sorry for the prolonged introduction, but this was necessary because we need to understand what is the issue at the core. And the issue at the core is that we don't get good enough IFC deliveries. We need to learn how to export better IFC models. That's it, it's simple. But we are afraid. Most of us are afraid and we just stick to the default button that we have in our tool. You can do much more than that. And you actually don't need to become an IFC schema rocket scientist. You just need to learn the most important things. And come on, like classifying elements, that's not such a big deal. Most of the time you have walls, you have slabs, you have beams, you have columns, you have this stuff. It's not so many of them. So you don't have any excuses. I'm sorry to break it to you, but that's the reality. Now, let me just show you how to use Blender Beam for that purpose. You can see here, here I'm using Solibri and you can see the name is Building Element Proxy and uh, the uh, IFC entity, it's uh, uh, IFC Building Element Proxy and Building Element Proxy type. 
Before I show you how to do that, there is also something else important. Like, I would definitely understand if you use an IFC building element proxy, if you use it for an element that doesn't really fit in any other categories. So let's say I have this bottle, right? There is no IFC bottle in IFC schema, so I cannot use that. What I would do in this case, I will call it IFC building element proxy, but then I will go one step further and call that user defined and I will call it water bottle for Petro, right? So it's important to use what we have. IFC schema, it's rigid, but at the same time, it's also flexible. So it allows you to add and enhance the things that you want, but you just have to learn how to do that. And it's not so complicated, like I said. Now, let me show you the two cases, okay? So this is the first one. Uh, I select the element, the my building proxy right here, and I go to object information. This is where everything happens. And we see here that this is the class, right? And the first thing that I will do, I will click here on this uh, pen right there. And we see that we can do some things here, right? Let's try and see what happens if we do this. In order to assign the IFC building element proxy user defined, we'll need to remove the um, type from this element because this has a type and it doesn't allow us to uh, change it. So let's uh, remove the type by doing this. So now this element doesn't have any related type. And when we go here and we want to change this to uh, user defined, now we can see that we get a new field right here called user defined. If I make this wider, let's see if I manage. There we go, user defined type, right? This is, uh, this is it. So let's type in here. Let's say that this is a proxy column, a specific, a special column, special column. Like, let's say that this is the case, right? And I will click here and we see that this is a special column. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm sure you doubt what I'm doing here. So let me save this. Let me go back to Solibri now. I'll close this without saving it. I'll open again my proxy stuff and clicking here, let's see. Oh, okay. So we see that in this case, we have a predefined type user defined and IFC entity, IFC building element proxy, but an object type in this case, it's called special column. All right. So now let me show you what you actually do when you have to assign this to a existing IFC class, which is already in the IFC schema. And in this case, it's IFC column, of course. So let's go here. I will click on edit and I will go and search for column. You can see it here. If you don't find it, you can just click on search. If it's too difficult to just scroll down, you just type in here column and I will click IFC column here and predefined type pilaster. You can use if it's user defined, you can go even one step further here as well, right? You can choose if it's just a column, you, you can keep it as a column or choose if, it, if it's a pilaster or not defined or user defined. Let's say that this is a column column, okay? And I'll click reassign IFC class. And now we see that in our case, we got it here, IFC column. Okay, but the name here is wrong, right? So let's give also a proper name here. So let's say column, 100, 100, I don't know what it, uh, the name that you are using, like this is up to the naming convention that you are using. So save attributes and now we can see that. This is an IFC column, column 100, 100. Let's save this again. Save IC project. Let's go back here. Let's close it without saving. Let's open it. Let's open it again. And now when we go here, we see that now this is an IFC column. And now when we are going to classify our elements in our model, when we're using them, then we have the right class. This is how you actually do that with Blender Beam. Of course, like I said, I do not definitely recommend to do this for a full model unless you really have no other choice. So I would always try to use the original authoring tool and export better models and just polish them some things that you did not manage to get right with Blender Beam. 